Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Fellowship in Essential Oils. This time, we're going to explore an oil that should calm and sedate you and have you in a nice, peaceful mood by the end of it. But we're really excited to talk to you about it. Today, we're talking about valerian. How are you, Liz? I'm good, thank you. And I'm excited because I have a love-hate relationship with valerian. I absolutely hate the smell of it, but I love the oil. Uh, I use it ever such a lot. So this is an, it has been an, an intriguing one to think about this week in readiness tip for this. It is an interesting essential oil because I find when it comes to sleep, which I think we're going to talk a bit about sleep today, you know, lavender obviously steps forward as being the number one oil. And then there's a few others that dance around. But if we were to look at herbs or natural remedies, valerian is kind of one of the stars of the show there, but doesn't seem to as an essential oil shine as much. Would you agree with that? Yeah, and I have to say, even I, my best friend in life are valerian tablets. Uh, I don't use the essential oil for sleep, although I very much rely on it, especially at the full moon when that sort of period of time where there is no sleep because I'm a lunatic. So you can do one or two days of like downloads and stuff, but then I have to switch off. And so, yeah, valerian and hot hot tablets. And of course, you yeah, because they're very, very cheap to buy. I can buy a packet of tablets for about three quid and that'll last me for the, uh, for the month or longer, depending on how well I'm sleeping. But and you can't smell them. <laughs> True. So obviously valerian is gifted from the root of a plant. Um but I was, I was just smelling it in kind of preparation for us recording today, and I'm like, it's not that bad. It's very for me. It smells very spike nardy, which I don't know. Yeah. Maybe I've grown to love that those two oil. I, I've grown to love spike nard over the years, and that maybe that's why I appreciate valerian a lot as well now. Yeah, well, spike nard and valerian have got quite a big crossover of constituents, um, and so that's what that's what you're smelling. But when I was a a, a child on the main ring road of Wolverhampton where we lived there was an old tramp in a, t a tent he was a, a um a Russian refugee who had just decided after war he didn't want to be inside anymore he lived in this tent and to me I always think that's probably what his feet smell like so. <laughs> <laughs> you, you never were brave enough to go and oh, no, on that. no no he wouldn't have let anybody close, actually. I can remember, actually, the, uh, we, everyone, the whole town got very worried about him one winter because he was, actually wasn't sleeping in a tent and he was just sleeping under bushes. And so the town clubbed together and bought him this tent. And even just when he, when, when the people went to, uh, I think it was probably the Salvation Army, went to pitch the tent for him, he still didn't want anybody close. So nobody got close to his feet. But I do smell that bottle and think that's probably what his feet smell like. <laughs> <laughs> well, let, let, let's not try and detract everyone too much from valerian. Let's talk about some of the benefits. So where would you reach for valerian for sleep in maybe as opposed to lavender or vetiver or something like that? Um, so, yes, it's very good for sleep, but um, and I would use it for sleep, but if anxiety was at the forefront... Mm. So rather than being, oh, just not sleeping because I'm stressed, I've got too much to do, it's very, it's profoundly important oil for um, anxiety. So people who have got anxiety as their main aspect at some point, you know, if they can't, if they um so for me, I don't like going traveling. So if I have to go to another country to, to talk, I absolutely love the experience in every possible way, except for the anxiety that overtakes me. Um, and so that then it becomes a really important toil for me. So people who are suffering from anxiety, um, whether that would be like a permanent thing that they're always anxious or if so the molecule of worry is estrogen and so for some women for example when it comes to the week before their period it's not just pmt it's pma uh, premenstrual anxiety again fantastic um also if somebody suffers from restless leg syndrome 
Clary Sage would be the main oil I would uh, reach for, but I would put um, valerian with it with some magnesium, so Epsom salts or magnesium oil. Any kind of condition where there is a spasmodic nature um, or where nerves seem to be the problem. All of the, and, and that's a lot of things. It doesn't seem that like that many, but it is a lot of things. Um, I always have it as the base note in a, a blend. And this is one of the few oils that I don't use on its own for obvious reasons. It was interesting. In one of the uh, resources I was referring to, it actually um, mentioned that valerian kind of rose in popularity during the World War II um, in the UK to help people get through each night. And I guess, you know, it was the combination of needing to get a good night's sleep, but the ongoing anxiety of bombings that were happening all around them. So what? not not that we're very blessed to be in many places in the world where that's not an issue now, but I guess that's a classic example of valerian helping in that way. Yeah, and so that kind of crosses into two things that I was going to talk about later, but I'll, I'll bring them forward. So the first is that in, if you read medieval herbal literature, one of my favourite authors is a, a gentleman called John Gerard, and he writes uh, 16th century, 1545, I think, his, his book is. And he talks about how it's really important plant of the poor, plant not oil, obviously, plant of the poor, because it's so easily accessible, it grows a, a lot around here, and that any kind of broth or soup is pointless without it. Now, I cannot mm. imagine putting it in a soup, but as soon as I read it, I thought, oh, I might have to try that. I do think it almost tastes horrible, but I can imagine that it must really, really bring it any kind of anxiety down but when I talked about the convulsive nature um I hate using the word spastic but in in the word as in like a proper medical term of spastic a spastic lung or you know where it, it kind of jolts and contracts really fast um so it's a very good um oil for any kind of spastic condition so like restless legs like um, asthma, where you have the contraction of the lungs, um, also um, cardiac spasm. So for arrhythmia, for cardiac fibr fibrillation, any kind of situation where you have that. And it almost feels like the body's jumping with fright, you know, that, that, mm -hmm. that jolt. It's as if it goes right through the system. But what you talked about earlier about it coming popular in the war, I was thinking earlier about, well, where's the Greek myths? And there aren't any Greek myths. It's in, um, it's mentioned by Hippocrates, it's mentioned by Galen, in exactly the same way that we would use it. Sleep, anxiety, spasm, uh, period cramps, those kinds of things. They say exactly the same thing. I was thinking, I wonder if it appears in the myths of hypnos. Now, there is an oil in, in hypnos, but it's just an oil. But uh, I love the description of hypnos cave. How he is one of Zeus's sons. He's, um, um, his brother is Thanatos, who is, who is death. And he lives in this cave, which is... Very, very dark. No light can get in. No sounds from the outside world can reach him. And I just thought that's such a fantastic description from 2000 years ago that the same problems that affect sleep are the same problems that affect us now. Obviously, we have more light pollution. We have more noise outside. And if you look at clinical studies about valerian when they're tested on rats and mice, et cetera, et cetera, there's very few on humans. That's what they say that they will. They fall asleep e more easily. They sleep longer, and they are distracted less by sound. Mm. So you can imagine why that would be so useful, as you say. You know that that you want to be woken up by an air raid siren, but there's a lot of other peripheral noise that just you just want to sleep. You know, because you need to recover from all the stress, don't you? So I can understand why everybody must have gone. Give it me. Give it me now. <laughs> 
Apart from that kind of sleep and, and what you talked about so far, would it be useful for things such as like headaches or digestive cramping or muscles or that kind of thing as well? Yep, all of yeah. those, especially if it's a stress headache or an anxiety headache. Um, it's not really a hormonal balancer, but when the hormones create worry or they they create tightness, which of course they do, then then yes, can, it is helpful. So in hormonal aspects, you might combine it with something like clary sage to actually hit that that nail on that head of the actual hormonal issues, but the valerian would come in as that kind of emotional or nervous support on top of that, correct? Yeah? Yeah, they do. They both do the same job, don't they? Um, the nicest combination I find with valerian is rose. Rose and valerian together smell, actually smell quite nice. And they are lovely hormonal balances and they really work on the nervous system together. Yeah, beautiful. Anything else that you use it for body wise that you find? Well, so like I say, any kind of situation where anxiety is at the root. Yeah. If you think about, and I keep saying root, and that seems like a pun, and I don't mean it to be. Um, but if you think about how when you are anxious, you, you tense your muscles. So those kind of situations where the body just feels rigid, it's not really um, the kind of oil that you might uh, think of, particularly for massage for tight muscles. But since you're actually dealing with the, the, the nervous root issue, then that kind of relaxation is helpful. And as I say, any kind of situation where it's spasmodic, so um, breathing sp spasm, um, heart spasm. It's interesting, actually, because it's an oil we know lots about and also simultaneously know very little about. There's huge amounts of research into the valerian plant because if you look at trials where people who got really bad nervous conditions really bad insomnia when they're comp when they're, the, they're given valerian versus they're given benzodiazepines valerian's better the science tells us that and that's really good because benzodiazepines are very addictive substances and so it's not it's um very simple to fall into the trap of becoming like de dependent physically for sleep but then that overwhelms the rest of your day your it, sometimes it can lead to to criminal activities it's um very easy to accidentally take an overdose so benzodiazepines are something that the doctors want to move away from and consequently huge amounts of uh, research is going into things that might be able to replace it valerian may be one of those things we know a lot about the active constituents of the valerian plant so for example there's two very important sets of molecules one is sesquiterpenes which we find in essential oils we know that they pass through the blood bar brain barrier so they will go to the brain and there are 12 different sesquiterpenes in valerian. Um, also, um, another kind um, of molecule called an iridoid. So an iridoid is a specific type of monoterpene that reacts with sugars in the body. And iridoids are really important because they're anti-cancer, anti-tumor, anti-inflammatory. The um, valerian plant has 26 named iridoids and then 10 that have yet to be uh, explored. So those those others, we don't even know what they do yet. All of these things can be related to how it works with sleep. However, interestingly, iridoids are hydrophobic, so we don't find them in the essential oil. Um Two really important ones um, are, I'm reading it because I can't ever remember how to say it, valipotriates is an, uh, um, and also valerianic acid. Now, valerianic acid is responsible for the smell, the Trump's feet smell, uh, but it's not in the oil. So something else is going on in the oil that we have no idea what we do. 
We know that the iridoids particularly work on inflammation uh, by acting on the COX-2 pathway, which is the, the pathway in the body that we use for NSAIDs, for aspirin, that kind of thing. And it's very, very anti-inflammatory. But again, those iridoids are not in the essential oil, but the anti-inflammatory actions are. So there's a crossover. There's so many things we don't yet know about the essential oil. Um, but also there's so much that we do know about the valerian and possibly why people tend to use the extract more than the essential oil sometimes. I do think that it's a good combination to, to use both, to, to have the tablets, uh, but also to have your valerian essential oil in the bath. Um, I wouldn't use it too much on things that you're going to go out in. You need a very clever blending hand, although valerian acid, I've said, is the thing that is uh, responsible for the tramp's feet smell. But it's used extensively in perfume. Um, it's mm. one of the, the, the most important constituents. So there's so much like... Um, confusion around how how it works Trust. yeah and magically it's been said to that w women carrying a valerian root or that the aroma could actually attract men yeah yeah and then it's a, an aphrodisiac yeah yeah, yeah. um yeah. so yeah so and i do you know what i i think i wonder about that because i think maybe their sense of smell was kind of different in the medieval times, because quite often you'll see, or oh, they use that, and you think that smells horrible. So you think we are very kind of um, trained to like sweet smelling things now, aren't we? Yes. You know, with synthetic stuff. But so it's, but also it is kind of a bit like sweaty bloke that's had a power tool all day, kind of grungy. I get it. I do get it. It's um, it's very musky smelling. But you've got to have a very, very light hand when you use it. I, I'm I'm just laughing on behalf of anyone who's watching this right now or listening to this right now, and they haven't experienced valerian yet, and they're trying to work out what on earth this oil smells like. I think it's worth right. getting hold of some just to experience that alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it is. I mean, it, it is a very deeply musky spell. And let's let's put that into context then. So the most important and famous ingredient in perfumery is castorium. Castorium is like the most aphrodisiac uh, thing that you can uh, come across. Well, it, it's pretty much banned now because it's a beaver's testicle, you know. <laughs> so we just, <laughs> well, or anal gland or something like that, something particularly unpleasant, but it's that like, like grungy kind of. Uh, grounded very grounded smell that's what it is it's grounded yeah so you know we're, we're kind of the jury's out on whether humans are going to like the smell of it but there have been some little snippets that i've seen where other animals might be keen on it i heard a dirty rumor now this one's not about prince harry or the royal family at all this one is actually about the pied piper and that apparently or allegedly it wasn't his pipe playing that was attracting the rats out of the city it was actually that he had valerian in his shoe, and that's what made the rats follow him. Have you heard that one before? I never have, but I love it. But uh, I can kind of, I can debunk it a bit by giving you another piece of uh, science that makes you think, oh, maybe not then. The leaves of the valerian plant are like catnip to cats. Yes. And I will talk so, about cats in a minute, yes. Yeah, so uh, so it might not have been many rats around there because a lot of cats. But it, oh, was I love that? I hope I hope it was that. Yeah, it could have been. We, let, let, let's jump on to cat because um, one of my favourite goddesses um, of mythology, coming out of Europe and going into Egypt, Bast. It is said that the valerian plant is sacred to Bast, which you know, being like catnip, it totally makes sense in that way. So um, if you know Bast is this cat. Um, goddess that's very much to do with, you know, our independence, femininity, healing, mothering, erotic dance of all things. And quite interestingly, there is an asteroid in our in, in our solar system named after Bath. It's called Ubasti, U-B-A-S-T-I. And when Ubasti goes into um into retrograde, what tends to happen is we all get a little bit catty. And obviously what I what I love about cats and all cat cat people probably do love about cats 
is cats have this really nice balance between affection and independence, um, depending on what your cat's like. And Ubasi really encourages and helps us to learn about that balance between being with other people, but then also being okay with time by ourselves. And sometimes that can be tested when she's in when the asteroid's in retrograde. And Valerian can be helped just to calm us down and to, you know, be okay around other people. So it is a really, whether you're interested in Bast, the goddess, Ubasi, the asteroid, or just cats in general, then Valerian could be a good one to work on, uh, work with in that more kind of magical sense. I love that. And there is a syncretism of, of, of Bastet that her wilder aspect is Sekhmet. Mm, uh, and, yes. and Sekhmet is the goddess of medicine. So that's that's an interesting parallel. Yeah, I wonder if Valerian would help to, you know, bring shift from that Sekhmet kind of fieriness down to that more kind of um she was kind of seductive in in that in that energy, but more calmer in, in that version of Bast, possibly. Much more sanguine, isn't she? And she do, and it's a funny one. It's got a funny relationship with heat, really. Culpepper talks about his uh, about its rulership, and he says it's ruled by Mercury because it's warming. And I'm like, well, I don't understand that relationship between Mercury and warming, and I don't understand that Mercury relationship. Full stop. But but yeah. warming is definitely a thing. Um, so it, it does it does warm but it, it cools the tempers down yeah got you. I, I guess war, like when we have comfort or warmth that would be soothing more, maybe more than cooling isn't it or you know friction yeah. between in relationships yeah and I've, I've said it about other oils before but it, i would say it was the ultimate weighted blanket you know that it's absolutely heavy, and you do have that sense of being heavy. And when I was reading what other people had written to, in, in preparation for this, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the, the science of the of sleeping a little bit and what we do know that it's done. Um, but a lot of people were selling Valerian, saying, oh, it wakes you, it, you have a good night's sleep, and then you wake up, but you don't feel groggy. Well, I've got to say, I really do feel groggy the next morning. So mm. I don't think that, so I don't know whether that's sales pitch or that it does affect certain people slightly differently. Um, but also the dose is definitely the poison. So perhaps it's because I'm having it in my bath and having a tablet. Uh, but but I do wake up the next morning. I'm like, that was really nice, but I'm not with it now. <laughs> um, when, but, so I, I, we do know it. We do know a little bit about how the essential oil works for sleep, which is interesting. This is one of the few pieces of information that's out there. Do we know that it, it works on sort of three different main aspects? The first is through the serotonergic uh, system, so the serotonin receptors in the body. Um, that it um, works on GABA, which is the main calming constituent in the body. But it does that through the adenosine receptor. So the adenosine receptor, the easiest way to understand it is, is it's what caffeine uses in the body. So it wakes you up. Yeah. Um, yeah. It is involved in things like pain. So there are pain receptors, for example, in the bladder, which is why some people can't drink caffeine because it, it makes them sore. So any kind of those situations you said earlier, is there any other situations would I would use it? Those kinds of pain situations around the back bladder, all of those things get rid of caffeine. Try using some valerian. So what happens is it works on on um, the, the valerian essential oil enters the body and it seems to improve the affinity of the 5-HT1AR receptor. That's a sub-receptor of the, of the serotonin system. Um, and then that means that more there's more serotonin, which is does lots of things in the body, but balances mood. Um, so there's more of that, but also it improves the quality of the receptors that are going to catch it. So basically, score, 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 calm, 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 calm. When that happens, that activates what's called ATP, um, adenosine 
uh, triphosphate. So ATP, in the most simple term, is the energy of our cells. So we have ATP in all of our cells, and it converts into what's called CAMP, um, which is basically the pathway that, that changes or makes um, cells work. So, so specifically here with, with valerian, um, ATP is activated in neurons in uh, neural cells, so our nervous system. And ATP is activated generally, without without uh, valerian, just generally, it's activated as soon as we start doing waking daily duties. So we wake up, we start doing stuff. So presumably we have our shower, we have we have our coffee, interestingly, we have our coffee. It all starts to work. And what happens then is ATP through the day builds up. So bit by bit by bit by bit by bit. And, t and the longer we stay awake, the longer it builds up. And its job is to make us feel sleepy, which seems contra uh, like counterintuitive. But obviously, the longer we stay awake, the sleepier we feel. And that's because ATP is getting higher and higher and higher. Um, and then when we go to sleep, it drops down. And they think that this is a really important part of rest and restore, that the ATP switches off so that we can start again the next day. So what valerian does, as I say, it improves this uh, this pathway of making more um, a better affinity of the 5-HT1AR receptors, so the serotonin receptors. They catch more, they make more ATP. And as that turns to, uh, to camp, we have this like downward pathway that goes through the system that goes, and we're going to go to sleep. Um, and so... As I said earlier, rodent trials show that uh, then we go to sleep easier. We uh, stay asleep longer and we are less disturbed by outside noises. Now, I so say we, this is rat trials. Uh, done with essential oil given orally to the poor rats. So maybe they need some of John Gerard's soup, maybe, to taste it. Uh, but but that's what we know what happens. So what we're actually doing is calming down this receptor that keeps us awake. So in a way, it has the same uh, same action as saying I'm taking coffee, na caffeine out my diet. It's working on the same um, pretext. Mm. Now, with with all the ways we've been talking for um, getting the benefits of valerian essential oil, how would you recommend they use it? Now, you said. You, they use it as a tablet and then you ha have the oil in the bath, do you? Yeah, and topically, yeah. Um, yeah, so my favourite oil blend for the bath is lavender, valerian, mandarin. Mm. So that in itself is like absolutely zonk you out and then I take a tablet as well. <laughs> it's not surprising the next morning I'm a bit like that. But uh, exactly. for somebody that dreams so so much, it's, it's uh, yeah, it's knockout. Um, yeah. But yeah, massage oils, fantastic. Um, creams and lotions that you can just put on your, your wrist or somewhere where people can't smell them too much, sometimes on your armpit out of the way. <laughs> um, they're all really good for anxiety. What I would recommend as well is to blend it with uh, rose, as I said before, in an aroma pendant. You'd be amazed how quickly you get calm with that. Yeah, I've got a bit of a stick that's got, um, you know, la lavender and many of the other sleep essential oils plus valerian. You can't really smell the valerian in it, and that's a great one. Soles of the feet, on the wrist, especially if you do sleep, kind of with your hands near your face, and then on the chest and just inhaling that in. It, it works a treat, and it's worked really well for a lot of people as well. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. Now, another, if we kind of go into more of the mystical aspects of it, um, you know, I love to talk about chakras, and for me this is one that works well with the Earth Star Chakra. So the Earth Star Chakra, where is our base chakra to do with our connection to just your one-on-one -on -one relationship? Do I feel safe and secure in this physical realm? Can I fulfill my basic needs and that type of thing? That's the base chakra. As we go to the Earth Star Chakra, this is an energy center that was recognized kind of over the last few decades as we've become a bit more um, aware of um more, more refined or more subtle energies. And it's believed that in ancient civilizations, such as Lemuria, Atlantis, maybe even Avalon, that they, they would recognise these chakras then. This Earth Star Chakra connects us to every animal, 
every plant, every person, everything that calls Mother Earth a home. So it really helps us to feel that sense of oneness. That even if we're feeling lonely in the company that we're keeping, we kind of feel that connection to this planet. And for those people that do sometimes feel that they their soul isn't from here, that they've come from another planet, Valerian could be a really great one for helping them just feel more at home. Now, specifically, I, we mentioned rats, we've mentioned cats as well, um, but other kind of earth-dwelling animals, things like moles or badgers, or if you do, you know, if you like ferrets and rats and mice, maybe you keep them as pets and that kind of thing. Valerian is said to help you connect with their wisdom and their intimate relationship that they have with the earth because they are so much down in the earth as well. And with the cats, obviously cats have that kind of spiritual perception of that. That's why the, the wish, the wise women of Europe and elsewhere would hit cats and to um, allow them to kind of notice the spiritual energies around and keep them safe as well. So what I also find about Valerian in, in the way we've been talking today is it can be really beautiful in a spiritual context to connect with the spiritual um, consciousness of the earth, but also one of the key words I use for Valerian is enchantment, of kind of connecting with that spiritual realms and allowing you to relax and get, get the monkey mind out of the way so that you can connect um, with those higher conscious um, realms that you want to kind of find that um Connection with, I guess. Said connection a lot of that, but you know what I mean. Uh, so that kind of taps into a lovely little thing I found very early on. I found a, a reference to it being important in Norse mythology, and I was like, "Oh, interesting." Well, I spent ages and ages trying to find, and I never did find like a god or anything. But apparently, in Sweden, uh, it's customary to put a sprig of valerian into the bridegroom's clothes to protect them against the jealousy of the elves. Hmm. I love it. Um, so, yeah, so if you've got to worry about um, elves, valerians, you think. Yes. I, it, 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 there are references occasionally to it being a, a, a protection herb or a protection essential oil. It definitely wouldn't be in my main artillery belt of oils for protection, but it could be used for that as well. Um, another <laughs> little reference, it, it seems that there's, it's kind of, maybe it's an oil that will come to emergence, you know. Um, I know your mother's book um, the, in the Garden of Eden, she talks about oils that maybe are going to become more relevant in the decades ahead. Maybe Valerian's one of them. Um, but it's been used also to quell fighting amongst couples as well which would make sense from what we've talked about today, but also on a more kind of um, magical aspect that could be used for that as well. Uh, so in that, did you look it up in Mama's book? I didn't. Did you? No, I didn't. No. So I wonder I wonder if this story's in there. So the, the other thing that, that uh, Valeria reminds me of is a cat that she used to have called Tiggy. Um, because Tiggy was like me. Tiggy was very, very anxious of travelling. And when their business first started, they would go all around the country selling their pots of cream. And so sometimes they'd be away for three, four weeks at a time. So the, all the animals would go with them. So there would be three cats, uh, uh, yeah, three cats, one dog, and then later three dogs all in this car in the, in the caravan. And the others were fine, but Tiggy did not like it. So we always used to put a drop of valerian on the inside of, of Tiggy's ears, and she would just be like, oh, <laughs> for the whole journey. <laughs> so, yeah, I do always think of Tiggs when, when I um, open it up. Um, it, yeah, so you talk, you, you're right, is that the consciousnesses of plants go up and down, up and down. And actually, when you look at protection, as a as like a watchword of Valerian, that's very much medieval English. That it was used to to scare away evil spirits, uh, ghosts. I remember writing this down. What did I put? Well, I can't see it now. Um. Uh. So I remember evil spirits, ghosts. Oh, and the evil eye, um, and and the devil. That and so. You know, this is kind of like pre-reformation stuff that that after the reformation people didn't really believe so much in the idea of purgatory but in in britain and in, in europe 
prior to the 15th century, there was always this idea that one was going to go and stay, uh, be in purgatory and that the the limbo souls were there to, to come and get you. So there's lots of lots of oil, but, but yeah, Valerian uh, was used for protection then. Mm. So we, we talked a little bit of astrology so far and you said you definitely don't think it's a mercury oil. I would definitely attribute it mainly to the asteroid Ubasi, and if I had to pick a main astrological body, I'd probably say Venus, I think, or maybe the Moon, or it's kind of enchanting, um, well, that kind of earthly aspect, maybe more Venus, the um, the enchanting, maybe more the Moon. What about you? Yeah, so actually, lots of people said Venus, and I'm not, I'm not feeling it. And interestingly, Venus, uh, uh, no. I was going to say something that was wrong. What what I feel that it would be is Neptune. That would make sense. Or, or possibly we could make an argument for Uranus being, you know, because it is well, a bit confusing and disorientating in that way as well. So Yes, and, and Uranus is um, actually connected to the, the, the electric receptors in the body, which is exactly what we were talking about early. So any kind of situation with the nervous system. Um, so I can see how he kind of went from uh, Neptune is the higher representation okay. of Mercury. Yeah. Um, and so I can see how he got there. So maybe like that's an outdated thing now. I think I would, I would go um, Neptune, Uranus. Yeah. Just to clarify, sorry. When we're talking higher octaves, Mercury is a higher octave than Uranus, yeah, and Venus. Uh, is no, a higher no, uh, no, Neptune. Uh, the, Neptune is the higher. Uh, I think I got that right. Higher octave of Mercury. Is that right? I'm going to have to disagree with you. Yeah, uh, no, Neptune. No, you're right. Uranus is the higher oct uh, octave, but yes, oh, Uranus. Mercury. Is the yeah. yeah. So yeah, Venus yeah. and Neptune, Mercury and Uranus. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Yes, cool. Chakra-wise, where would you use Valerian chakras? Root. Root, yep. That would obviously make sense of several reasons we've talked about today. Um, root, would you regard, root oh. and, and brow chakra for the whole sleep thing. Yeah, yeah, definitely, for sure. Um, and and if, go on. If somebody, if somebody, I'm going to say if somebody, if I, <laughs> if I have a time where I'm getting too many downloads or if – for whatever reason, I'm hypersensitive. You would have thought it would have been in the eclipse. I wasn't for whatever reason. I don't know. But I do go through times where I can just hear everybody else's thoughts and take everything else on and be hyper empathic. It's like somebody throws it. Well, it, I always say it's like the silk over the crystal ball. It mm. just goes, nope, everything out. Yeah. So if somebody, if anybody struggles with that, we've been like a real big empath and you get overwhelmed, it's a good way to go, nope, no more. Yep, that makes sense for sure. Now, would you regard this to be a relatively safe oil for usage? Yeah. 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 And dilution, how do you normally dilute your valerian? Um, 3% would be like the safe, but I feel like you don't really need 3% in most situations, one drop start with one drop in a, in a teaspoon or even a tablespoon if you you know if you just feel like you just want to relax but if you feel hyper an anxious um i mean it's it's bad to say but you can put it on neat but why would you because it's the tramp socks but you can it's very 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 um safe oil but remember what i said that it's the poison it, it, the dose is the poison if you use too much some people it can be stimulating i've never seen that i've read that in books but so just be, use Tasha's favourite word, judicious. Be judicious. Start small if you need to go bigger. But why? I don't understand why people go, I'm going to put loads and loads in because it's blooming expensive. <laughs> Start mm. really small and then work up. Exactly. You can always add more. You can't take it away. Correct. Yeah. So I don't know this week if we've actually helped people or hindered people um, in the way that they're like, if, if you haven't experienced valerian, whether you want to smell it now or if you're scared to smell it, but I would say it's worth having in your collection, um, especially all those times when you need to get a good night's sleep from those kind of anxieties or, you know, overly overly stimulated from even magical or spiritual aspects like full moons, yeah? It's a physician plant. 
you're you're not going to use it for a hobby. You're not going to use it to it, just enjoy the fragrance to scent the house. That's not what it's for. It's it is a medicine. This is, but please don't. And I'll put every like disclaimer that this is not medical practice. You know, please do not take this as medical advice. All of those things. But if you're looking to do something medicinally, you kind of can't be with this without this oil. Yeah. No. Agree. Very much. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for joining us for this episode of Valerian. We'll be back next week when we dive deep into another oil and unpack it and either enlighten you or confuse you like we may have done with Valerian. But maybe that's just <laughs> the enchanting nature of this essential oil. Until next week, take care and see you soon. Bye-bye.